RX Television on RXMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm your host, Adip Faruqi. 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions on diet, training, supplementation, life, IFBB comp uh, competitions, competitors, so on and so forth. It is all on the table. As we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, you just recorded an episode of Iron Rage with John Romano about a story out of Australia that's really starting to make its way around um, the different blogs and is starting to go viral. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit more about that and the current special right now on speciesnutrition.com. Well, first of all, yeah, you know, the story is about a kind of like a wannabe, you know, guy who thinks he's got a good physique, who is making fun of and mocking old people who don't know how to work out. And there's nothing I hate more than, than bullies. And why well, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it gym bullying. I, I just think it's just disrespectful. Number one, to, an, to your elders. Number two, if someone doesn't know what they're doing, you know, I'm a big believer in, in helping them out. So John and I kind of go over the two sides of the topic and, and whether it was appropriate or not. And we talk about the Playboy Playmate who also got uh, nailed, uh, I guess, a couple weeks ago for taking a picture of some heavy woman in, in the locker room of the gym, which is a private place. So there's just people are just nuts with the social media. And I think that there's got to be some boundaries. Um, as far as the Species Nutrition special New Year's Eve stack goes, you know, everyone always asks me or, or emails me uh, out of guilt that, oh my God, you wouldn't believe what I ate over the holidays. I feel terrible. I got to lose some weight. What should I do? And they always want to do these crazy extreme things, starve fast. I'm like, look, you're not going to last more than a day doing this. Get on a solid diet. Um, and, and I started thinking to myself, you know, people just want not necessarily competitive, they just want to lose some weight, maybe for four weeks or six weeks for the holidays. So what I did was I designed the Species Nutrition uh, Fat Loss Stack. It's Somalize, which is our nighttime fat burner and sleep aid, Lipolize, our daytime fat burner, and Fiberlize, which is a great way to get rid of toxins and waste in your body. And if you buy those three things, we're going to give you 25% off at SpeciesNutrition.com, and for free, I'm putting in my ketogenic diet. That's right going to be all the mathematical formulas so you can calculate it specifically for your weight. I give you all the rules and how to set it up. I even give you a little supplement stack and how to follow it all for free. But you got to buy the stack. When you go to speciesnutrition.com, you pick the New Year's Eve stack. You'll get the 25% off plus the free diet will be emailed to you afterwards. It's a huge value you're getting for a very small amount of money. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see everyone get in great shape for New Year's, so by the time February and, and March and the Arnold rolls around, you'll look, be looking pretty damn good. Let's get to the questions. If you want to ask a question, you can join us on the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com. If you're not already a member, it is free to register. If you're watching us on YouTube and you're watching us for the first time, we ask that you subscribe, like this episode. We're going to be pumping out more shows like this throughout the course of the next few weeks, months, and especially filling up the contest off-season with all sorts of original programming. You can ask your question on the Facebook page, Twitter using hashtag AskDave. Let's go to Santa Claus on the Muscle Central Forum. Yes, yeah, Santa Claus. Hey, Dave, what do you recommend for jet lag? Of course, we know Santa travels a lot, especially during this period of time. Any supplement or protocol to combat some serious issues? As you well know, this globe trotting can really hammer a guy. Topic very relevant to those in the bodybuilding industry and for those who travel for business all over the place. Yeah, well, uh, I, I've conquered jet, um, jet lag many years ago. Uh, when I went to Dubai in 96, I you know, researched before I went about taking melatonin. I took melato melatonin is a hormone produced by the pineal gland or pineal gland, some people say, in your brain. Uh, as darkness starts setting in, the pineal gland starts releasing this melatonin, which signals to your body it's time to go to sleep. That's why, you know, we kind of know to sleep during the night and, and be awake during the day. Um, in older people, as we age, we lose the ability to produce melatonin, and a lot of times uh, you lose the ability to decipher sleep and wake cycles. That's why elderly people a lot of times will go to bed at 8 o'clock and they're up at 4 in the morning. They don't, they don't understand, their bodies don't understand night and day. That's why melatonin has been suggested as a, a hormone-type replacement as we get older. 
what I found is that when we travel across time zones, imagine you're in the eastern time zone here in, in, uh, on the east coast of the United States, and you travel, you know, five time zones, okay, to over to Europe. Uh, and there's a, you know, 10 hour difference now between, you know, what it was in New York and what it is there. Your body just did it in one day. It doesn't know. It hasn't reacclimated. It hasn't been able to reset itself. So you're not going to be able to sleep normally. Um, if you take melatonin right before bed, it's about three to six milligrams, it will instantly tell your body, this is darkness, go to sleep. Um, so what I use is obviously my, uh, our Species Nutrition Somalize product contains a nice healthy dose of, of melatonin in, in addition to GABA, which helps you fall asleep. So when I travel, I take three Somalize 20 minutes before bed, and you know what? I never have jet lag. And then when I come back, I do the same thing to reset myself back. So super easy concept. Three some lies, 20 minutes before bed. Let's go to BB50 plus. Dave, what's the deal with beets and nitrates? Is it a scam or do they help? And do you have to eat the beets? If so, how much or drink the beet juice? I, I've told the story. I don't want to repeat myself. I hate repeating myself because I start sounding insane, but um, I told a story about how I was juicing vegetables back in the, you know, maybe five years ago, and I was juicing beetroots, beets, uh, one night. I put the whole thing into the, this huge beet into the uh, food processor or the juicer, and I drank the whole thing down, and I was jumping around all night. I was a, a maniac. Veins were coming down my head. I was, I, I wanted to go to the gym. Um, and then I, and when I did some research on it afterwards, I realized that nit uh, the beets are very high in nitrates, or nitrites, whatever, nit nitrates, excuse me. Uh, nitric oxide, you know, nitrogen, essentially. And that boosts nitric oxide release in the body. So uh, a lot of people use the nitric oxide. We use it in, in nitrolyze uh, for stimulating, you know, better pumps. It's actually better than arginine. Uh, my friend Ron Kramer uh, has actually a patent on that, uh, use of beetroots for, um, for nitric oxide release, because he knew about that even before I did. So he told me about it. So it, it's, it's a great product for nitric oxide release if you're looking for good pumps in the gym. And, and it never stops working. So you can do it every single day and you're not going to you know, down-regulate itself or anything like that. EB wants to know if you've ever produced an Iron Asylum type training video of you in your prime. And if so, when or well would it be ever released? You know, back in, in when I competed, there really wasn't a lot of video being done. I uh, commissioned a, uh, a video to be made back in 97. Uh, I paid a lot of money for it, 15 grand. Matt Duvall and I did it together. It was called Reconstruction of a Bodybuilder. And in there, we, we do train. So I don't know if anyone, I, I put up all the clips on our YouTube channel. So if you go to the Arx YouTube channel and Google those, you'll see it. I have back, leg, shoulders. I put up all the, I, I took the video and I basically, you don't have to buy the video if you don't want to. If you want the video, I think we still have some copies, but, but you can just get it off the YouTube channel and you can see me train. Now, obviously, I wish I had more instructional stuff back in the day that I did. There was one video I did, uh, Mitsuro Okabe shot me um, doing a leg training session after one of my, I think the USA Championships one year. Never released it. I never saw the footage. I, all I know is I did it in World Gym and Joe Gold was uh, hitting on uh, my girlfriend at the time there the whole time I was doing the video <laughs> from his wheelchair. And uh, I thought it came out great because I was talking to the camera the whole time. And it was just me and Mitsuru. No one else was in the gym. So I, I don't know where the footage is. Maybe if anyone knows Mitsuru Kabi out there or sees him still, I know he's in Hawaii someplace, maybe that footage can be dug up and it might be the lost, uh, the lost uh, gem of uh, the last, or the lost, the last gem uh, leg training session of Dave Palumbo. I don't know. Uh, I do have some pictures uh, of a leg training session I did that I never put up either. I might put those up at some point. But um, maybe I'll do a uh, training series. I'll have to bring some young guy to the gym with me, and I'll just be instructional. Because at this point, I'm like Mickey from Rocky. I'm all busted up, but you know, <laughs> I still got a lot of good knowledge in my head. <laughs> so you're looking for your next Tommy Gunn. Let's go That's to right. Tavares, 15. Dave, I did your ketogenic diet for 16 weeks. I got very lean. I tested a couple of days carving up using aldezide, simply following your last week protocol. At the end, I wasn't able to fill out my muscles. People around me were asking if I had any kind of disease because I was very thin and a lot of cramps in my leg. What could have gone wrong? Should I do more refeed days or is the keto diet just not ideal for me? 
Well, you know, number one, you have to carve up. I don't know how you carved up for the show. Uh, you said you took aldactazide. Uh, I'm assuming, you know, you could have taken too much of it. It could have over dehydrated you. You know, there's a lot of variables that, that I don't know what's going on. So, you know, if you lost the body fat on a ketogenic diet and you were lean and you just didn't look good on stage, it could mean that you didn't carve up right, you didn't dry out right, you over dried out or you over or under carved. Uh, that's why you need a coach. I do a lot of last week contest prep for people where they hire me just the last week. You know, they can't afford to do the coaching, but they'll pay me $100. I do the last week. I do all the carb up, the depletion, everything. And this way it takes the guesswork out of it. Some people hire me the last two, three weeks for 200 bucks just to make sure I peak them properly for the show. And like I said, if you don't have money for a full coaching type of program, and by the way, I do have some holiday deals on there now. If you're looking for coaching with me, there's some, some special uh, discounts on the DavePalumbo.com website. But if you don't have the money to do a full, you know, bore contest prep, hire me for the last week or two. Because it'll save you so much stress, anguish, and not knowing what you're doing. And once you learn it once or twice, you should be able to do it yourself. And even then, a lot of people don't want to even think about it. Because there's too much to think about the last week. It's hard to look at yourself subjectively. And that's why they hire people like me for the last week prep. So um, there's a lot of variables. It's hard for me to give you a definitive answer. Well, let's check in on our YouTube channel. Again, if you're following, if you're watching us for the first time on YouTube, we ask that you subscribe below. We were projecting 65,000 viewers by the end, or subscribers by the end of 2016. We're on pace to hit 69. So as always, we're appreciative of your support. Like this video, we're going to continue working and producing great bodybuilding content for you. Let's check in with JP. Can you quickly explain why HGH and blood sugar monitoring is important? Can HGH create insulin-related problems? Yeah. Uh, before I talk about that, I do want to say, uh, you know, Sid, I know you you're, you think we're on pace to get 69. I would love 70,000 by the end of this uh Dear, which is only a couple days away, and I think we could do it because I know we have a lot of listeners out there. I know how many people watch this show. Over 10,000 people watch this show every single time, and I know some of you guys out there are not subscribers to the YouTube channel. So please, make my prediction come true. 70,000 subscribers by the end of 2016. If you don't subscribe, click the subscribe button below. And let's do this. I know we can do it. That's Johnny saying, by the way. I just stole it. He, he's got copyright infringement. He's going he's gonna to take me to uh, court later. All right, let's get to the question about growth hormone. Look, when you take growth hormone, growth hormone is a hormone that does the opposite of what insulin does. What does insulin do? It takes carbs, sugar specifically, in the blood, and it puts them into the cells. It feeds the cells. And when the muscle cells are all fed and the brain cells are all fed, the extra goes into fat storage. Okay, so insulin's job is to monitor blood sugar levels. Okay, assuming your pancreas is working correctly, your blood sugar should always be stable because insulin is constantly taking the sugar out of the blood and, and putting it in the cells. GH does the opposite. It mobilizes nutrients. In other words, it takes nutrients out of the cells. Okay, specifically for a bodybuilder's purpose, it takes the fat out of the fat cells and makes it into energy. Okay, it mobilizes fat, it burns fat essentially. The problem is that insulin and growth hormone, because they do the opposite thing, when they're in the body together, sometimes they can inhibit each other from working. Specifically, more specifically, GH prevents insulin from working properly because it doesn't allow insulin to get to its receptor. If insulin can't get to the receptor physically because GH is in the way, okay, what happens is blood sugar starts to rise a little bit. Or, or they don't go down at least. And then what the body senses is that it thinks there's not enough insulin around. So the body starts producing more insulin to try to combat this, this issue. So a lot of people sometimes get fat from this because they're producing too much insulin. Uh, that's, that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that if you overstress your pancreas, it could burn itself out and die off. Not the whole pancreas, the beta cells that produce the insulin because they're being overworked. So the more GH you take, the more likely you are to become insulin resistant, meaning your insulin's not working properly because your body can't produce enough. Over the long haul, you know, a couple of years and years and years, the insulin cells stop producing insulin and now you're running high blood sugars, not because there's GH necessarily there, but because there's just not enough insulin present. And those are what we call type two or maybe type one and a half diabetics. Um, and you know, I know a lot of you have heard Colette Nelson talk about this uh, and, and suggest taking insulin uh, you know, various different schematics. 
Um, my belief is that you know if you are taking higher amounts of, of, of GH and you have a good metabolism, you probably could take some insulin. I usually recommend Humulin R twice a day. Um, but the bottom line is, do you need to take your blood sugars all day long? No, but you should know what your blood sugars are. The best solution, and I tell this to everyone, is just don't take excessive amounts of GH. You don't need it. Three to four IUs a day is more than enough. Even two IUs will give you great results. There's no reason to be taking six, eight, 10, 12 IUs, especially since most of you out there can't freaking afford it. You're spending every money, every dime you make, then some, on a product that's not even helping you in any way whatsoever, at least not the excessive dosages of it. So be smart, don't overdo it, and, and you won't destroy your body. You shouldn't have to take one drug to counteract another drug. You're watching Ask Dave on RSMuscle.com, brought to you by Speezy Nutrition. Let's go to our YouTube channel and go to, well, Dylan Frazier and Saf Saf have more or less the same question, so I'll combine the two. The benefits of vitamin D and fish oil in bodybuilding, how much should you take of each? Everyone, when I say everyone, is deficient in vitamin D3, okay? Uh, if you don't take a supplemental form of it. Unless you're out in the sun with no clothes on every single day, you're, you're deficient in it. So every person out there should take 7,000 units of vitamin D per day. I've de the reason I know it's seven is because I've, I've tested myself, my blood levels. I need to take seven to be at 50, and 50 is the bare minimum. Even though some of the blood tests will tell you 35 is the low minimum, it's really 50. You want to be over 50. And to do that, you've got to be at 7,000 units of vitamin D3 per day. Uh, now, if you take my V-mineralized multivitamin multimineral, that has 2,000 in it already. So people who take that, I just have them take an extra 5,000 on top of that. And it's a very cheap pill. You can buy Life Extension brand vitamin D3 probably for like five or six bucks for a whole month's supply. So it, it's, it's definitely worth doing. Now, the other, the other vitamin, what was what, Sid? Uh, fish oil. Fish oil. Fish oil is one of the essential fatty acids, specifically the omega-3 fish, uh, the omega-3 fat. So we want to take at least 3,000 milligrams of that a day. But the, the, the important thing is to make sure you take it in the right ratio to the essential omega-6 fat that your body also requires. Uh, gamma linoleic acid, and that's found in evening primrose oil in very high amounts. So uh, to make your life easy, I made a product with via species nutrition called Omegalyze. Omegalyze contains 3,000 milligrams of fish oil and 2,600 milligrams of evening primrose oil in the same pill. And it just makes it so simple. You take three pills in the morning, three pills at night with meals, and, you're, and you, it's like an insurance policy for your health. So 7,000 vitamin D, 3,000 fish oil, 2,600 milligrams of primrose oil. We stick on our YouTube channel and go to Surin Petrosi. And Dave, could steroids be beneficial after shoulder surgery, fully healed, to increase recovery and rebuild muscles after atrophy? If so, which ones? Well... All steroids build and repair muscles. So any steroid would be good to re help get back lost muscle mass. Now, if you had a shoulder surgery where there was a tendon repair or some cartilage worked on, it's not going to heal that because, remember, steroids work on muscle tissue, not connective tissue. However, if you atrophied because of the fact that you couldn't train, the steroids might help the muscle come back a little faster. So to me, start low. Less is better when you're using it as a therapeutic recovery aid. I mean, 200 milligrams of testosterone a week will do the job. I mean, it's cheap, it's easy, very few side effects. That, that's what I would do. Let's go to Laura Forsberg. Dave, how much do you think birth control affects a woman's ability to get lean and build muscle, if at all? Does manipulating the hormone balance in a woman's body negatively affect these processes? Mm -hmm. When I work with women, I'll, you know, if they're on birth control or they're not, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But I, if they ask my opinion, I tell them to get off the birth control. It's, it's def estrogen definitely is going to make it more difficult for them to, to get leaner, okay, if they're taking an estrogen pill. Um, having said that, a lot of the bikini girls I work on, I tell them to stay on it because, you know what, it gives them a little rounder butt. So it doesn't really matter because you're not trying to get striated glutes in, in a bikini competitor. So for most of the women, I... I, I you know, I recommend they, they don't take birth control if they're competing unless they're in the bikini division. Let's go to our Instagram channel, oh, Instagram page rather. If you're not already following us, our handle is at official underscore RX muscle. We are sitting right now 
at 78.9. As always, we appreciate your support. Let's go to Fat Chance 89. Could you briefly explain how to time painless pump usage in conjunction with a show and prepping for a show? In other words, how far out would one begin their painless pump protocol and how close would one stop their painless pump protocol before their show, if stopping at all for the show? All right. I, I've talked about site injection oils before. I, I'm not going to rehash it. Obviously, there's only really two products in the market that have real science behind them that are real products. Anything else should, should, should not be utilized because it's, they're just oils that people are putting into bottles. One of them is, is Chris Clark's original synthesized pump and pose formula. Um, and the second one is painless pumps, which is a close, they're, they're pretty evenly matched. The painless pumps hurts, doesn't hurt at all. The Chris Clark leaves you a little sore. The Chris Clark seems to last a little longer and have a little stronger effect. But the Painless Pumps has more CCs in each bottle. So they kind of balance each other off. I sell both at DavePaloma.com because I believe in the two products. I know the two owners of each company and they're reputable products. So in that respect, you know, I think it's a good product to take and you're not going to get, uh, have any problems with it. Having said that, you know, I, I think that the longer you use the product, the more potentially permanent the gains are. That means when you first put the stuff in, you're going to see a volumization of the muscle with what you're injecting. Okay, but many months after that, you're going to see muscular gains that are going to be gained from having that in the muscle. So there's two really two tier effect. There's an initial, you know, effect, and then there's a long term muscle building effect. So the, the long term muscle building effect is benefited by the longer you're on the product. The short term muscle swelling effect, you could do it for a few weeks. So I, I tell people, look, the best time to do it is start it in the off season, go right into your pre-contest and stay on it. And then maybe after the show, take a couple of weeks off just so you don't have to be shooting yourself all the time. But um, I tell people to stop doing their biceps the Wednesday before a Saturday show and stop doing the triceps a, on Thursday before a Saturday show. Let's go to Rich underscore Aesthetics. A question about Roman Fritz. I'm a huge fan of Roman Fritz, but do you think staying so lean year-round like he does hurts his ability to peak come showtime? No, I don't, because I think he's always, he's always in terrific shape on stage, so it's not hurting his ability to peak. It might be hurting his ability to put muscle on, and him and I have discussed this, and you know, he doesn't like to, he's a very regimented eater, and you know, for him to eat crazy foods, he has to you know, text me and ask me if it's okay, you know, so he can have uh, some, you know, it's almost like th a therapy session I got to do with him. But yeah, I, I, I do believe that um, if he would you know, allow himself a little bit more freedom in his diet and his food choices, he would probably grow better and maybe a little faster. But I, I, I've never seen the kid out of shape on stage, so uh, I, I don't think it's affecting his ability to peak. Mr. Party Physique, Dave, what is the ideal test to trend ratio? I always I like to use a, a anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred milligrams of, of testosterone. I think is the, is the high level, and I think trembolone should be about a quarter of that, about you know two to three hundred milligrams per week. To me, that's ideal. Remember, testosterone is the most anabolic muscle building hormone in the body. That should be the bread and butter of your cycles. The anabolics are just a little boost, okay? After that, plus you don't want to be taking a ton of trembolone because it, it has side effects. It causes anxiety. It doesn't let you sleep at night. You get you know, angry, irritable on the stuff. Less is better with that stuff. Mbell971, hate the show. How does a classic bodybuilder make improvements when they're already struggling to make the weight cutoff? So that's a, a good question. You know, uh, luckily in the pro ranks now, they raise the weight class five pounds. So these guys can, can gain a little bit more weight. But, you know, if you're at the limit and you want to still continue to bodybuild and make improvements, you're going to have to leave the, the classic physique division. That's all there is to it. If you're a bigger guy with a lot more muscle, you go to the open bodybuilding. Don't be afraid. Bodybuilding is bodybuilding, whether it's classic or bodybuilding. The reason why classic was, was designed was for guys that, that, are, that are not that heavy, who have very small frames, who don't want to eat a lot of food and don't want to get huge. That's what classic is for. If you want to put mass on, which is great, most of us want to, get as big as we can. That's bodybuilding. Go into the bodybuilding division. Let's go to C. Preeper, 19. Dave, love the show. My question is, should you taper off of steroids before going into PCT, or do you come off of everything all at once? How does this process work? From a steroids perspective, 
I usually, you know, stop the stuff just cold turkey. I just stop it. That's it. No more shots. Now, people would think it sounds like, oh, it's, it's like a heroin addict not taking any more heroin. No, the difference is that heroin only lasts a couple hours in your body. The steroids you took, the last shot you took today will probably be in your system for four weeks. So it's going to trickle out slowly. So you're not going to crash off stopping steroids. Okay? What I usually do is I have everyone stop what they're doing, you know, and then a week after they haven't taken their last shot, they'll start HCG. And that means the HCG will start producing, you know, testosterone in their testicles naturally. And then two weeks after that, we start Clomid, which turns the pituitary gland back on. During this whole time period, however, there's still residual steroids in the system. There probably will be for four to six weeks. So uh, the great thing about steroids is they last a long time, so it's not a, a, an all or none type of phenomenon. Let's go to, uh, I believe it's Pura Vita e Bodybuilding. Big fan of your show. Question, struggling to finish my cycle with three compounds as I'm getting ripped injections. It's getting painful. What's the real limit you can load on your shoulder? If you're asking me how many cc's of, of, of gear you can put in a certain sh in a person's shoulders, it's, it's different for every person. The bigger you dealt, the more you can put in there, you know? So... If the stuff is just looks like it's just laying there as a lump or it's you know swelled up, I certainly wouldn't continue to put it in the same spot because it's just it's not getting absorbed obviously, and or if it stagnates there it can cause infection. So you got to be very careful of that. Move your injection sites around, switch around. Don't put too much in one area. If one area looks overloaded, stay away from it. You know you you got to be smart about this. Let's go to Bobby MT08. Dave, backstage at a show, is it possible to pump up too much as trying to hit a decent double bicep shot after a heavy arm session? It's pretty impossible. Or is this down to a lack of practice? I um, pumped up backstage. I didn't lift the weight. I would just do posing. I would pose and go through my routine and I would just move and stretch. That was it. Because... When you get up on stage, you want to have as much energy as possible. I see guys, the guys that are backstage pumping up for an hour, I know they're going to look terrible and they're going to be exhausted on stage. Because you have no energy, you're dehydrated, you have no body fat in you, and you're doing workouts backstage, it's crazy. The, the, the pump that you get for two seconds won't even be on you when you finally step on stage. It'll, it'll be gone. Just pose. Trust me, I almost tore my pec backstage. I actually did tear a tiny little piece of it backstage uh, because I was watching Gary Strider, who was the guest poser at the time, and this was in 92, doing some dumbbell flies with 60-pound dumbbells. I'm like, I could do that. No warm-up, dehydrated. I felt my pec pull. I was like, I can't believe how stupid. I was so pissed off that I did that. I never pumped up again. And you know what? I didn't need to. Let's go to Gus underscore five. Dave, your take on occlusion training. <laughs> I, just, I think I just talked about that with uh, John Romano the other day. We were talking about uh, tourniquet training. Uh, you know, Triple H, who is one of my clients, as everyone knows, I do his diet. He trains with a, a trainer called the Joe DeFranco. He's a sports-specific uh, exercise guy. And Joe's been doing occlusion training with his, for his legs to help his legs grow. And, you know, they look bigger. They look like they are engorged with blood more. I don't know if they're actually physically muscularly bigger. Um, for, you know what? For bodybuilding purposes... I think it's not going to do you any good. Okay, for sports-specific endurance-type training, I think it definitely has a place. But for bodybuilding, get under a squat bar and squat. That's how you're going to get big legs. Final question. Um, last week, Dave, there was an article um, about Arnold Schwarzenegger. I forget exactly which publication uh, he was interviewing with, but he talked about his struggles with his own body image. And even during his peak, how he would look in the mirror and, quote, throw up just looking at himself. What was your take on Arnold's comments? Well, I thought it was the most honest thing he said. You know, uh, a lot of people th think that, you know, people that are very cocky are, are, are very co confident guys. Those are usually the people that are the least confident in themselves. They're kind of overcompensating. And I think that's what he was implying that was happening. He's like, you know, I was an overcompensator. And because he was so afraid that he looked terrible, he would train harder than anyone train longer than everyone, and he, he learned this, you know, he essentially learned by repetition. It's like the guy who doesn't know how to read and, and doesn't tell anyone and has to learn how to read on the job, you know, and he's going to study more than everyone else. He'll probably turn out to be the best reader when it's all said and done. And that's what Arnold did. He made himself a master of, of bodybuilding by but just practicing it so much. 
Um, you know, they say to be a real master in any in anything in life, whether it be twiddling the, your thumbs or playing video games. It takes ten years of, of of practice to be a true master in anything you do. So the more time you put into something, and I read a book, the guy who plays ping pong was saying that too. He's like, I wasn't. It's not that I'm the greatest ping pong player. I just practiced the most at ping pong. And uh, so if you want to be good at anything in life, it's a good take-home message. Spend a lot of time doing it, and you'll be the best. Finally, before we close this episode, Dave, real quick, next month, Bros versus Pros, back here on Long Island at ProFit Gym, and then you're going to be doing um, a set guru seminar out on the West Coast. So if you can recap both those events for our audience. Yeah. Uh, January 4th. In Saturday, January 14th in San Diego, uh, California at Hardcore Fitness there, uh, hosted by Derek Farnsworth. I'll be doing the Secrets to Becoming a Diet Guru course. Um, the sign-up is at DavePalumbo.com. Right now, I, I think we're almost, we're very close to at full capacity. We have about three or four more seats left. So guys, I'm telling you, girls, whoever, if you want to take the class, it's a terrific class. I probably will not get out to the West Coast again this year. Uh, this is your opportunity. I know a lot of you out there have been asking me, Dave, Dave, please hold one on the West Coast. We, it's too far to go to, all the way to the East Coast. I want to see you guys there. I know who you are. You guys email me all the time. Make time to make it to the class. I'll tell you one story. Quincy Roberts, a good friend of mine who's a, you know, ditch, who runs shows in North Carolina, great pro, just turned 60. He's been doing it for many, many years, better than anyone. Great trainer. He is flying out to San Diego. He signed up. He's like, look, I can never have too much knowledge, and I respect that about him. Uh, Pete Ciccone is going to be at the class. Derek Farnsworth will be there. Louis Uriel, the big sexy, will be at that course. So it's going to be a cele- It's going to be like a celebrity class out in San Diego. So guys, make sure you sign up at DavePalumbo.com because I don't want to have to tell you that we have no seats left because once the classroom is full, I can't jam any more people in there. Also, January 28th, we'll be, uh, Johnny Styles and I will be flying back to Long Island uh, we'll be, I think we're going to be uh, camping out in sleeping bags in the old warehouse. And we'll be doing Bros vs. Pros uh, at the ProFit Gym in Deer Park, New York, thanks to Alex Luca. We'll see Jerry Scalisi there. All the boys will be there. We'll be doing uh, bench press for reps, squat for, uh, excuse me, deadlift for reps, and bench press for reps. Colette Nelson representing the women bodybuilders. And the um, IFBB Pro male bodybuilders are represented by Akeem Williams once again. So guys, we'll be giving away cash prizes. Make sure you stop down. It's free to enter, free to come uh, watch. Plus, there'll be free food Alex is giving away. She puts on a great party. And Johnny Styles will be live streaming it on rxmuscle.com for everyone who can't make it. So it's going to be a great weekend. That's January 28th. And then tomorrow, Johnny wants me to remind everyone, we have the Iron uh, Rage. Oh, my rant will be up. I forgot about that. Iron Rage is today, right? Iron Rage is up today. Iron Rant, or Dave Palumbo Rant, I don't even know what we call it anymore, uh, I will be talking about ketogenic products, okay? These, you know these products we're talking about, these keto products that people are putting out saying, take this, you'll be in ketosis and burn fat. Eat whatever you want. I'm sick of it. Don't miss it tomorrow. I will give you my take on what these products are all about and what ketosis really is. That is going to do it for this episode of As Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com, get the New Year's stack, fiberlized, somalized, lipolized, and of course, Dave Palumbo's Keto New Year's God. I'm your host, Adi Faruqi. For Dave Palumbo and Johnny Styles. we'll see you next time.